Welcome to Ezika Academy YouTube channel. In this lecture, I want to examine IS 20, Accounting for Government Grants and Disclosure of Government Assistance. This is my second video on the topic. If you are coming across my lecture for the first time, please like the video and also share it with others. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you for being part of this channel. In my first lecture, I gave you the types of government grants. I said we have two types of government grants. Grants related to income, which is also called revenue grants, and grants related to assets, which is also called capital grants. So, I have examined grants related to income in the first video. But in this second video, I want to examine grants related to assets. So, I told you we have the general principle. The general principle, number one principle, which I have examined in my first video, is prudence. I said grants should not be recognized in the financial statement until the conditions for receipts have been complied with, and there is a reasonable assurance that the grants will be received. You can only recognize grants in the financial statement where the conditions attached to the receipts of the grants have been complied with, where that conditions have been met. And there is an assurance that the grant will be received. Then we said we equally have our prorats. Grants should be matched with the expenditure towards which they were intended to contribute. These are the two principles I gave you in my first video. Grants related to assets or capital grants. These are grants for the construction or acquisition of non current assets. We are grant is received for the construction or acquisition of a tangible non current asset. We refer to that as grant related to assets. So there are two methods of accounting for this or method of doing that. So we have two methods of measuring grants related to assets. Number one method is to deduct the grant from the cost of the non-current asset and depreciate the reduced cost. Deduct the grant from the cost of non-current assets and depreciate the reduced cost. The the grants from the cost of non-current assets and depreciate the reduced Cost. This method can also be called net method. Net method. Since you are matching the grant with the cost of the non current asset. The second method is to treat the grant as deferred income. Treat the grant as deferred. Income and recognize it as income on a systematic basis over the useful life of the assets. Treat the grants as deferred income and recognize it as income on a systematic basis over the useful life of the asset. The two methods will better be explained with examples. Keep watching. An entity opens a new factory and receives a government grant of $15,000. 
irrespective of capital equipment, costing 100,000 naira. It depreciates all plant and, and machinery at 20% per annum. Straight line. Show the, straight, the statement of profit or loss and statement of financial position, extras, in respect of the grant in the first two years under both methods. Now, let's have the solution to the question. Solution. The first thing is to identify the type of grant it is. What type of government grant is this? So, an entity opens a new factory and receives a grant of 15,000 in respect of capital equipment. Capital equipment is an asset. That is to show that this is a grant related to assets. But to show the statement of profit or loss and statement of financial position, extras for your first two years. So now let's have statement of profit or loss, extras. For the year one and year two, first two years. So, amount in US dollar. Let me see method one. Method one. We are grant will be treated net of the related expenditure. Net of the related expenditure. So, in this case, the expenditure on the capital equipment is 100,000, and the grant received is 15,000. If you subtract 15,000 from 100,000, then you'll be left with 85,000. So, now let's net it. Net method. The cost of the asset is one hundred thousand. Then grant received that is fifteen thousand. If subtract fifteen thousand from hundred thousand, you'll be left with eighty five thousand. It is this eighty five thousand that will be depreciated. Then the depreciation that will appear in the statement of profit or loss. Depreciation. The rate of depreciation is 20% per annum, straight line. So we have 20% of the net amount, which is 85,000. So 20% of 85,000. That gives us 17,000. That is for, let me put year one. Okay. 17,000. If this is for year one, then year two, depreciation of 17,000 will equally be recognized as an expense. So, that is for that. Then, statement of financial position extract. Statement of financial position extract as at year one and year two. So, for year one now, you have the cost of the asset, which is the net amount. Since we are using net method, which is 85,000. How much is the accumulated depreciation? Accumulated depreciation for year one. Is seventeen thousand. If you remove seventeen thousand from eighty five thousand, 
there you'll be left with 68,000. That is the carrying amount of the equipment. This is equipment. That is for year one. Year two, we have the cost of the equipment. That is equipment at cost eighty five thousand accumulated depreciation seventeen thousand for the first year, seventeen thousand for the second year. So the accumulated depreciation is thirty four thousand. If you remove 34,000 from 85,000, then you have the current amount of 51,000. That is carrying amount. That is the solution to the question using the first method. So method two, where grant will be treated as a deferred income. Method two. That is, you are taking the grant as a credit in the statement of profit or loss. You are not going to net it. So, grant treated as a deferred income. That is, you are treating the government grant as a credit in the statement of profit or loss. So we have year two, and we have statement of profit or loss extract. We have year two, year one. Now, in the year one, Depreciation, the rate of depreciation is 20%. 20% of the cost of the asset. And how much is the cost? You have the cost to be 100,000. 20% of 100,000, 100,000. That will be 20,000. Straight line method. So in year two, depreciation will still be 20,000 as well. Then you are now treating the grant as a deferred income. So which is other income. Grant income. So I've told you the grant will be allocated on a systematic basis. The grant received is 15,000. Then, I've told you, you use straight line, 20% of 15,000. 20% of 15,000. That means in year one, 3,000 will be treated as an income. In year two, 3,000 as an income. That means minus 20,000 plus 3,000, then you still have minus 17,000. Expenses, depreciation of 17,000, just like the first method. Now, let's have the statement of financial position extra. Statement of financial position extra. For year one and year two as well. They have year two, year one. As part of your non current asset, we have non current asset. You have equipment. The cost of the equipment is 100,000. No, you are not netting it. You are not deducting the grant from it. 
then accumulated depreciation. Depreciation at least twenty percent of cost, which is twenty thousand, as reported earlier. Remember, in the statement of profit or loss, we reported depreciation of twenty thousand in year one, in year two twenty thousand. So accumulated in year one is twenty thousand. In year two now, accumulated total to date, which is twenty thousand plus twenty thousand. So the accumulated depreciation is forty thousand. This twenty thousand. 20 plus 20. That is what gives us the 40,000 here. So the carrier amount now, at the end of year one, you have 80,000. Then in year two, the carrier amount is 60,000. Then the grant will be treated as a liability under this method. No current. Liability and uh, current FC government grant grant then current liability liability you also have government. At the end of year one, how much of the government grant? Remember, the total grant you received is fifteen thousand. Of the fifteen thousand, three thousand have been realized at the end of year one. Three three thousand have been realized, which has been which has been converted to income. Then, what will still be left as liability? At the end of year one is twelve thousand. This twelve thousand will be split into non-current liability and current liability. Remember, three thousand has been realized at the end of year one. This has been realized. Its period has expired. This period, this one has been due. It has become an income, which is realized. Then the Many 12,000, you have it as liability. Of the 12,000 again, in year two, 3,000 will still be realized. That means the moratorium, the majority date of, of 3,000 is short. That is why you recognize the 3,000 as current liability. Remember, I've told you from 15,000, 3,000 is realized, leaving liability as 12,000. Uh, out of the 12,000, 3,000 will be realized in year two. So that means that 3,000 that will be realized in year two will be left as current liability in year one because its moratorium, its realizable period is very short. So under current liability, we have 3,000. That is of the 12,000. If 3,000 is current liability, then 9,000 will be left as no current liability. Then in year two, in year two, how much will be left? 3,000 will be realized in year two. Leaving 9,000 as liability. Of the 9,000 that will be recognized as liability in year two, one of it will be due in year three, which is still 3,000. That is current liability. Why the remaining 6,000 will be no current liability? This is the end of the solution to the question. Please drop the love emoji and also share the video with others. Thanks for watching this video.